morning, everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Kalabukas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation startups, the future, not necessarily those, and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening to the, your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, I have been working on a brand new venture. And I'm not ready just yet to announce it, but it is very exciting. It's keeping me up at night. It's really, really cool. It's an amazing extension of where we need to be in the future, where the where media needs to be in the future, where content needs to be in the future. It's very exciting. I'm so excited, but I can't talk about it yet because it's not quite ready for prime time. I'm still working on it. I'm still working and tweaking it. But there is one thing I wish we would be able to solve, and this is the thing that drives me crazy, is that all we ever talk about nowadays is AI. AI this, AI that. Everybody's forgotten about everything else. Everything else. So whatever it is you got to do, it's got to do with AI. And startups, if you're a startup founder, if you're thinking about doing a startup, what are you going to do? You're going to just do a startup in AI, right? I mean, you're not going to do a startup in anything else because people are going to ignore you completely. Investors are going to go, what the hell are you talking about? I don't want to do whatever you want. I want to do if it's a, can you put an AI spin on it? Can you add some slides on how AI affects what you're doing? Only then I might decide to throw some money at it. So yes, if you're running a startup, if you're thinking about putting a startup together, if you're thinking about doing anything in the startup space, if it has nothing to do with AI or AI is, is not a part of it, then nobody's interested, right? We're in the AI surge right now, the surge of AI. So one of the things that's kind of driving me a little crazy is that part of what I'm doing in this new venture does have something to do with AI. Of course, of course it has something to do with AI because AI is going to be a huge part of our lives going forward. There's no way we can stop it. There's no way we can say, hold on, let's be a should we on this and decide not to use AI or use not enough AI or just no AI in anything that we're doing. We can't do that anymore. That, that ship has sailed. Okay? The train has left the station. What metaphors do you understand? AI is embedded in everything we do. It's already embedded in everything we do. It's already there. So if you can't beat them, join them. Join the crowd. But there's one glaring hole in AI right now. And this is exactly where startup founders need to jump in and fix this glaring hole. And I'm not quite sure why this glaring hole is here. But... Maybe someone out there can explain it to me. Anyone who's a little more into where things are in the AI space and why we haven't progressed a little further along this path in the AI space. Or if there are startups who've actually solved this problem and I don't know about them yet, please let me know. Thinkfuture at gmail.com, thinkfuture at gmail.com. Just email it to me. Let me know if there's a startup that you know about in this space that has solved the problem of having ChatGPT barred... Or Bing or what, any other engine out there use real-time web results. I can't get it to work. I can't get the damn thing to work. In fact, ChatGPT just announced the other day that they were going to create a browser model, a special version of ChatGPT4 that is able to browse the web. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Keeps crashing. Click this, click that. Doesn't work. I tried it multiple times. It doesn't work. I try to go to Bard, do it at Bard. It doesn't work. Supposedly, Bing is allowed to do it. I tried it at Bing. Doesn't work. Gives me junk results. Tell me what's going on here, folks. People who are a little more into the AI space, who understand these models, tell me why so many of these models end in September 2021. What happened in September 2021? Is there like should we start our numbering on years differently? It's like pre-AI, post-AI, post-AI, pre-AI, pre-ChatGPT, post-ChatGPT. Why is this, there's this cutoff in September of 2021 and nothing after that can be indexed? Like that's, for example, you wanted to fly somewhere. You wanted to say, well, I, I'm thinking about going to Zurich on vacation. Let me go to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT about 
going to on vacation in, Jer in Zurich. And it's like, oh, well, you know, I can tell you about flights prior to September 2021, but I can't tell you about anything after that. I'm like, what if they added flights? What if they deleted flights? What if the flight numbers changed? All this stuff, all this information is a black hole to most of these AI. So the two questions I have is for startup founders out there. Well, first of all, for AI people out there, why is that the cutoff? What happened in September 21, 2021 for people to say, okay, you know what? After this date, we're going to stop. We're just going to use this size corpus. Is it because of the size of the database? You know, do you need to add more memory to your server? I mean, what the hell is it? What is it that's stopping us in September 2021? And why are we now trying to do live web results, but we can't do it? What is the holdup on doing that? So if somebody out there is in the middle of building a startup, we're thinking about building a startup that can very quickly it only do up-to-date results as part of the corpus, then I see a unicorn in your future. I mean, seriously, this is a huge problem, folks. We really need to deal with this right now. And I don't understand why we haven't been able to yet. It seems like there's so much computing power. There's so much interest. There's so much power. There's so much going on in the AI space. We still can't solve the, if you ask me, teeny weeny problem of indexing search results and sucking those into the corpus in real time, even if it's not in real time. I might say, hey, tell me about flights to Zurich, et cetera, et cetera. And if it says, if it says hey, I'll get back to you in 10 minutes. I'll get back to you in 15 minutes. I'll get back to you in an hour. Even that's better. It reminds me of the days when we used to have travel agents. Do you remember the days when we had travel agents? I mean, we've gone full circle on this. We have used to have travel agents. I would call up my travel agent and say, I would like a great vacation. He would ask me a few questions and I would give him a few answers. And he would book me the best vacation at the best price, exactly what I wanted. Now I have to spend inordinate amounts of time doing all this work myself. I want to get back to the point where I can go to ChatGPT and say, hey, ChatGPT, can you book me a vacation? Here is it. And it asks me a bunch of questions and it goes off and books the vacation for me. But it can't do that until it has real time data. What's the holdup, folks? And if you're working in the startup space, see if you can fix that problem. Because if you ask me, that's a unicorn in the making. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.